okay. Just as you have linear interpolation in 1D, this is this is bilinear because it is linear along both you know x and y directions. So, it is called a bilinear interpolation. Now, this bilinear interpolation what it tries to do is it tries to make use of not just one pixel value, but then tries to make use of in fact, four neighbors in order to be able because when you land in that box, you have not just one neighbor, you have four neighbors, right? And you want your want your final assignment to be to be controlled by to controlled by by how near this where you have landed, right? How near it is to the pixel on to the left, or whatever, right? Left top, right top, right bottom left, and then right bottom right. Okay. Now imagine that uh, now I'm going to draw okay a bigger box here. So suppose you have landed here, okay. Suppose, suppose you suppose you have done some inverse mapping and this is that one pixel box. Okay, so 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 imagine that oh where are we? So imagine that we are yeah oh okay. I think uh, yeah so so imagine that uh, that we are somewhere here right. So in this box right that I mentioned. Uh, how do you push this up? Okay yeah. So imagine that this box right that I've shown here. Okay, that is the box that I'm that I'm expanding there. Okay, it is it is that box, and suppose I suppose let's say right suppose so it means that I've assumed some x t, right, and I'm assumed I have assumed some y t, and from here right I get my x s y s. So if it is if it is that in plane rotation, I'll do an R transpose on on uh, on x t y t. Right, you have x t suppose you had your uh, you know x t y t as r times x s y s then you will get your x s y s as r transpose because r inverse is simply r transpose right these are all orthogonal matrices so any rotation matrix is in fact an orthogonal matrix so so when you bring this here it become becomes r transpose and that will multiply multiply x t y t so you, so you choose an x t y t Multiply it by suppose it was rotation, or else depending upon whatever is the transformation, right? That you have that relates the target and source coordinate. Use the inverse transformation, and you will get uh, for a, for a given for a chosen x t y t, you will get some value for x s and y s. Okay, suppose suppose that x s and y s is this. Okay, here is where you have landed. Okay, and this coordinate is x s y s. Okay, for some x t y t in the this one target grid. Now, this guy, right? Uh, because because this is all this is all within a within a unit pixel box, right? This this is one pixel, one pixel, right? All on the, on all four sides. So suppose we call this as let me just give some notation here, and so that uh, we stick to one kind of notation. What do okay? I x s dash y s dash. So suppose we call this as x s dash y s dash. Then clearly x s dash is equal to in this case, floor of excess, right? Whatever be excess, excess dash will be because you want to name this as excess dash y s dash, uh, because that is the that is that is to the left of left of an excess and y s and uh, y s dash is equal to floor of y s. Okay, so suppose. Okay, now again, again, right? So here I'm, I'm kind of say assuming that, assuming that you know when you travel down, x s and y s are increasing. Okay, this is increasing to the right, and then this is increasing downwards. Okay, suppose right, with that kind of a convention, then this will be floor of x s, and this will be floor of x y, and this guy will then. Okay, now what notation am I using here? X s dash. Okay, y s plus one. Y s dash plus one. Then this will be x s. Dash plus one comma y s dash. Anyway, right? I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, in the lab, right? Suppose we give the other way. Suppose we ask you to take this as x and that as y, then you should just accordingly change it. Okay? That 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 won't change the logic. Just that the convention might just change. Sometimes uh, because you know this is the way I think MATLAB has it, right? Like row then column. But then when we when we write this this convention, this R rotation matrix that I wrote. For a clockwise, I I said x is this way, so x is column, and y is row. Okay, so here here there's a small sort of a drift from that. Okay, but that is okay. Now it won't really change your logic in any way. So x is dash plus one, and then this is y is dash plus one. Correct. And uh, let us say that uh, what is uh, some a and b? Okay, that you want. Okay, let's call from here to here. Right, this is a. And from here to here, okay, this is B. 
where this so so your b is like or no let us say that b is like ys minus ys dash and a is uh, xs minus xs dash okay and uh, 0 less than or equal to a b less than or equal to 1 right so the max value the minimum value that a and b can, get, can take is 0 in which case they will just land here if a and b are, b are both 0 then that xs ys will land exactly at xs dash ys dash maximum that they, that they can take is 1 that means you will land here at xs dash plus 1 and ys dash plus 1 okay? in between they can take any value okay? that is the range of a and b okay with this uh, sort of a convention okay? now when you do a when you do a bilinear interpolation right so what you what you want to do is you want to be able to assign a value to your to your target it at xt yt okay because it is for that xt yt that you have gotten this xs ys that is brought you here and uh, and since right, it is sitting somewhere inside this box in a binary interpolation we don't want to simply bank on one of the intensities we want to we want to use as many as we can in this case the the nearest neighbors are these four guys we would like to use all four of them okay so in this case what it will mean is and then and then you would want to weight those intensities depending upon how close this xs ys is to those pixels correct the, the, the closer you are you want to give a higher weightage for that for that location or the intensity at that location. What this means is that you will have something like 1 minus a into 1 minus b i source. So, i source means this one. Okay, So, this image is like i source. Okay. So, the intensity here is is of x dash comma y x s dash comma y s dash. The intensity at this location is is of x s dash comma y s dash plus 1 and so on. So, i s at uh, so 1 minus a uh, correct and x s dash y s dash plus with respect to this guy it will be what 1 minus a into b i s of x s dash comma y s dash plus 1 and plus when, when you when you talk about this guy here that will be a into 1 minus 1 minus b i s of x s dash plus 1 y s dash plus then for the last day it will be simply a into b into i s of x s dash plus 1 y s dash plus 1 correct so, all these are the source intensities. So, what this actually means is that if you had a situation wherein a is equal to 0 0.5 and b is equal to 0 0.5 that means you landed exactly in the middle of the grid middle of this box then it will mean that all these values will then be say 0.25 right everything will get scaled by 1 by 4 which is okay which means all of them will get will get uniformly weighted because it's equally near from all of them but suppose your a a was 0 and b was 0 then it means that all these guys will drop out this will drop out this will drop out this will drop out only the first term will remain if a is 0 and b is 0 if a is 1 b is 1 then only the last term will remain everything else will go out right naturally because it is it is it is it is you know it is in fact landed at that pixel location itself but if it is a is some point 1 and b is some point 2 then accordingly right whichever it is nearest to so, for, so in that case this guy will get will get a higher weightage this intensity this will get relative so 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 this is kind of a relative weighting right where you where you just check how far you, how away you are from your four neighbors and then and then assign intensities now this is the way this is the way bilinear interpolation is done and uh, this does this actually reduces that jagged appearance and all because you are not banking on just one intensity you are using four you can of course you know go for go for go for interpolations that can use a larger spatial neighborhood right here you have used a neighborhood of uh, neighborhood of four pixels right so your your spatial neighborhood as it is called uh, consists of uh, nbd right spatial neighborhood is four pixels but then you can go you can go higher you know 9 16 and so on right? but then that will mean you will have to do more work and then you can have so those are like you know splines cubic spline interpolation all which you must have heard of so those are all kind of higher order uh, you know higher order operations some of them right you know involve even uh, even uh, even as a even sort of you know a, a derivative of the intensities and so on right? depending upon which of those interpolation algorithms you use but the simplest of them all is simply a binary interpolation where you can simply just take four nearest neighbor because that seems to be the most straightforward thing to do okay and uh, uh, right and and the way and now you can kind of see clearly see that you will fill up a target grid without any holes and also you would be able to reasonably take care of jaggedness 
and so on with the simple operation from like a bilinear interpolation. Yes. No, 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 it does not mean that it will automatically result in space. See, when you do some kind of an averaging, right, if you do a blind averaging, this is that if you do a uniform averaging, then what you are saying is true, that is what will cause smearing. But then if you, if you, if you, if you wait such that as you go outer and outer, you are going to, you are going to give lesser and lesser influence to those, then smearing will not occur. Okay, so, you can still use a larger neighborhood, but only thing is, uh, intuition says that something that is farther off should influence less my intensity here than something which is, which is right next to me, right. So, so, so as long as, as long as you take care of that, it is okay to use, use even, even a larger neighborhood. It does not mean it will automatically, automatically smear. What you are saying is something like an averaging operation where you are also doing weighted, but then your weights are not, are not in sync with, you know, where each location is. Then that can cause smearing, but these, these will take care of that. Just as, just as even here, right, we have taken care of that, right. We, we are making sure that the guy that is closest will influence the intensity the most. Ideally, right, you see, this, this was only to, only, to, only to make you realize that, you know, doing a, doing a transformation, right, what does it entail? Uh, and, and if you ask, you know, why is this useful, okay, why is such an operation, why, why, why should I care, okay, that I am able to rotate, I am able to translate and all. If, if you ask, why, why do I need that, then uh, simplest example is the zoom in, which I said. You might have an image and you want to zoom in, you could use a thing like this. Uh, more, more important than that is, uh, is when, let's say, people want to want to check, right, what exactly has happened in an area over, over, let's say, right, a period of time. Like, for example, imagine that IIT Madras, right, 40 years ago, what kind of a, what kind of a tree, uh, right, a tree sort of see density did IIT Madras have versus, versus what it has now. Suppose somebody were to ask this question. Then one way to do would be to kind of, you know, get some photograph that was taken in, whatever, right, 40 years ago, okay, at that time from some aerial view of IIT Madras. And then you would, you should take an aerial view now. And the, the point is, right, you can't exactly go to the same location from where it was taken earlier, right. You take from, from somewhere, you see, nearby. So, you might have taken it from here, this is, let's say, the IIT Madras campus, you have taken a, taken a picture and then you come here and then you take one more picture. You could be, right, you need not be exactly at the, at the, at the same location at all. Now, when you want to compare these two, you cannot directly subtract them because what will happen is your orientation is going to say, is, has changed. So, what you have to do is you have to first make sure that these two are aligned. So, for example, in these 40 years, right, if let's say no tree had grown in the sense that, right, nothing had happened, then if you subtract, you will get absolute zero. You will say, oh, nothing has changed. But we know for a fact that some trees have been replaced by some buildings and maybe some places that were, uh, that were earlier empty have, we have grown trees there. All this has happened. The first thing, the first thing that you want to do is bring one of them in alignment with the other. It does not matter which one. Let us say, right, let us say I take the image 2 and then, and then I try to align. Suppose, let us say image 2 has come out like that. And then the first thing that I need to do is align it with respect to image 1, correct. So, uh, which then means that first of all, I need to know what transformation will take me from here to there, okay. And once I know that transformation, then I have to apply the inverse of that on this image, right. Because, because if it is like this, then I, then I kind of right, need to make it like, now, now, right, that is the transformation that we are talking about, okay. Within this itself, right, you, I have a source, which is this image 2, but I want to create an image 2 prime, which will be in sync with this image 1 in terms of alignment. So, when I want to do that, that is exactly this, this thing that we are talking about, the source to target. So, there your target will be this realigned image, your source will be this image 2 that you have captured. And your image 2 prime will then will align with respect to image 1, then you can slap, you know, one on top of the other and then you can take a, say, whatever, right, you can do a differencing, whatever you want to do and then, and then you can start concluding, right, what changes have happened, which areas have, have become, you know, which areas have more trees and so on, right. So, so, and uh, no, that is a very, very important problem. Even from a surveillance point of view, right, people are always worried. You have the satellite, satellites going around, right, and, and uh, there are times when, let's say, these are overlooking other, the other country and there are, there are certain kind of sensitive zones where they know that if those military trucks, right, begin to come out, then you know that something is going to happen, right. So, the idea is that as long as that, that region is quiet, you know that, right, you need not worry. But then the moment you see a big activity there, then it means, oh, something is going to happen. So, again, so a change, uh, simply finding a change is such an important problem. Even in an airport, right, I think, think about it. Uh, to be able to say that something is, you know, lying unattended, right, is, 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 is a very, very important, important problem, right. So, somebody comes, leaves a hand baggage, right, and then, and then, and then you, if you know that there is a hand baggage and for the next two minutes, nothing has happened, right, nobody has come near it, nobody has picked up, that means your change is absolutely zero, then there should be an alarm. That hey look right because first of all you should know that somebody left a hand baggage there and then you should be able to tell that in the next two three two three minutes nothing happened 
again right there the problem is a little simpler because the camera is typically fixed and then you only have to worry about maybe some illumination maybe someone else coming into the area and so on right whereas uh, typically these things are used when you when when you can't say restrict a camera to a particular location right you allow a camera to to, to go where it wherever it wants image is seen and then come back and then you want to compare 